Chapter 8 Nitya Dharma and Vaishnava Behavior In a forest bordering the southeastern bank of the sacred pond, known as Sri Gorakhrada, there were some Vaishnavas living in a secluded grove. One afternoon, the Vaishnavas of that place invited the Vaishnavas of Godruma to join them for afternoon prasad. After honoring prasad, the Vaishnavas sat together in the grove. At that time, Lahiri Mahashai sang a bhajan that awakened ecstatic love of Braj in everyone's heart. Gaura Katalila Karila Ekane Advaitadi Bhakta Sange Nichale Evane Range Kaliyal Domana Sankirtane Ekhrada Hoite Prabhu Nisharila Nakra Prabhu Krishna Nena Kaliya Damane Krishna Yena Kaliya Damane Oh, think of the many pastimes Gora performed here. He danced and sported in this forest grove in the company of Advaita and other Vaishnavas. Just as Sri Krishna tamed Kaliyanaga, so our Prabhu delivered a crocodile from this pond with his Sankirtan, which became known as Kaliyadamana Sankirtan. When the bhajan was over, the Vaishnavas began to discuss the similarity between Gauralila and Krishnalila. While they were doing so, a few Vaishnavas from Bharagachi arrived, and offered Dandavat Pranam, first to Gorahrida and then to the Vaishnavas. The Vaishnavas in the grove offered suitable respects to the newcomers and seated them. In that secluded kunja was an ancient banyan tree, around whose base the Vaishnavas had constructed a circular mortared terrace. Everyone honored the tree as Nitai Vat, Nityananda Prabhu's banyan tree, for he would enjoy sitting beneath it. The Vaishnavas now sat beneath this Nitai Vat and began discussing spiritual matters. A young inquisitive Vaishnava in the group from Bharagachi said very humbly, I would like to ask a question, and I will be most satisfied if one of you will please answer it. Haridas Babaji Mahashai, a resident of that secluded Kunja, was a wise and deeply learned scholar. He was almost a hundred years old. He had personally seen Nityananda Prabhu sitting beneath that banyan tree many years before, and his heart's desire was to depart from this world at this very spot. When he heard the youth's words, he said, My son, while Paramahamsa Babaji's entourage is sitting here, you need have no anxiety about receiving a reply to your question. The young Vaishnava from Bharagachi then inquired very humbly, I understand that Vaishnava Dharma is eternal religion, and I would like to know in detail how one who has taken shelter of Vaishnava Dharma should behave with others. Having heard the newcomer's question, Haridas Babaji Mahashai glanced over at Sri Vaishnavdas Babaji and said, Vaishnavdas, there is no scholar in Bengal at the present time who is equal to you, and you are also a superlative Vaishnava. You had the association of Śrīla Prakasananda Saraswati Goswami, and you have received instruction from Paramahamsa Babaji. You are a very fortunate recipient of Śrīman Mahāprabhu's mercy, and you are therefore most fit to answer this question. Vaishnavdas Babaji Mahashai said humbly, O great soul, you have seen Śrīman Nityananda Prabhu, who is an avatar of Baladev himself, and your instructions have enabled countless people to enter the spiritual path. I would deem it a great mercy if you will instruct us today. All the other Vaishnavas agreed with Vaishnavdas Babaji. Seeing no other recourse, Babaji Mahashai finally relented. He offered Dandavat Pranam to Sri Nityananda Prabhu at the foot of the banyan tree and began to speak. Babaji, I offer Pranam to all the jivas of this world, considering them to be servants of Krishna. Everyone is a servant of Sri Krishna, although some accept this and some do not. Although everyone is by nature a servant of Sri Krishna, due to ignorance or illusion, some souls do not accept this. They form one group. Another group consists of those who do accept their natural identity as servants of Sri Krishna. Consequently, 
There are two kinds of people in this world, those who are diverted from Krishna, Krishna Bahir Muk, and those who are attentive to Krishna, Krishna Un Muk. Most people in this world are diverted from Krishna and do not accept Dharma. There is nothing to say about such people. They have no sense of what is to be done and what is not to be done, and their entire existence is based upon selfish happiness. People who accept some moral principles have a sense of duty. For them, the great Vaishnava, Manu, has written, Dritishama damostayang, socham indriya nigraha, dirvidya satyam akrodo, dashakam dharmalakshanam. There are ten characteristics of religious life. Driti, determination with patience. Kshama, forgiveness, which means not retaliating when wronged by others. Dhammo, control of the mind, which means equanimity even in the face of unsettling circumstances. Asteyam, abstinence from theft. Socham, cleanliness. Indriya, nigraha. Restraining the senses from their sense objects. Dir, intelligence, which means knowledge of the Shastra. Vidya, wisdom or realization of the soul. Satyam, truthfulness, and Akroda, absence of anger, as demonstrated by even temperedness amidst irritating circumstances. Six of these characteristics determination, control of the mind, cleanliness, restraint of the senses, knowledge of the Shastra, and wisdom, are duties to one's own self. The remaining four, forgiveness, abstinence from stealing, truthfulness, and absence of anger, are duties to others. These ten religious duties have been prescribed for people in general, but none of them clearly indicate Hari Bhajan. Furthermore, one will not necessarily attain complete success in life simply by carrying out these duties faithfully. This is confirmed in the Vishnu Dharmatara Purana. Jivitam Vishnu Bhaktasya Param Pancha Dinanicha Natu Kalpa Sahasrani Bhaktihinasya Keshave Quoted in Hari Bhakti Vilas 10.3.17 it is most auspicious to live in this world, even for five days, as a bhakta of Sri Vishnu, whereas it is not at all auspicious to live in this world for thousands of kalpas without bhakti for Sri Keshava. A person who is bereft of bhakti for Sri Krishna is not fit to be called a human being, and that is why Shastra refers to such non-devotees as two-legged animals. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.3.19 states, Svavidvara hostra karai samstuta purusa pashu nayat karana pato peito jatu nama gadagrajaha. Only men who are like dogs, hogs, camels, and asses praise those who never hear the holy name of Sri Krishna, the elder brother of Gada. If a person never allows Sri Krishna Nam to enter his ears, he is like an animal. In fact, he is more degraded than hogs that eat stool and other rejected substances, camels that wander in the desert of Sangsara eating cactus, and asses that carry heavy loads for others and are always harassed by the Shias. However, the question raised today was not about what such unfortunate people should or should not do. It was only about how those who have taken shelter of the path of bhakti should behave with others. Those who have adopted the path of bhakti may be divided into three categories, kanishta, neophyte, madhyam, intermediate, and uttam, topmost. Kanishtas are those who have embarked upon the path of bhakti but are not yet true bhaktas. Their symptoms are described as follows. Archayam evaharaye pujam ya shradaye hate natad bhakte shuchane shu sa bhakta prakrita smritaha Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.47 One who faithfully worships the deity form of Sri Hari but does not render service to his bhaktas or to other living beings is a prakrita bhakta, a materialistic devotee. 
Thus it is established that Shraddha is the Bija, seed of Bhakti. One's Bhakti is only effective when he worships Bhagavan with Shraddha, and it is still not Shuddha Bhakti unless he worships the Bhaktas as well. Bhakti does not develop thoroughly as long as he fails to do so. This type of Bhakta has barely entered the doorway of the practice of Bhakti. It is said in the Srimad Bhagavatam 10.84.13 Yasyatma buddhi kunape tridatuke svadi kalatra dishubhoma ijyadi yat tirta buddhi salile na karhichi jane svabhigeshu sa eva gokara One who considers this corpse-like body comprised of the three elements vata, pitta and kapha to be his real self who regards his wife, children and others to be his very own, who considers mundane forms made of earth, stone or wood to be worshipable, and who regards mere water to be a place of pilgrimage, but who does not consider the Bhagavad Bhaktas to be more dear than his very self, to be his very own, to be worshipable and to be places of pilgrimage, such a person, though human, is no better than an ass among animals. The purport of these two shlokas is that one cannot even approach the threshold of bhakti without worshipping Bhagavan in the form of the deity. If one rejects the deity form and resorts to logical debate alone to deduce the truth, his heart becomes dry and he cannot ascertain the true object of worship. Yet even when one accepts the deity, it is essential to serve him in transcendental consciousness, Shuddha Chinmaya Buddhi. In this world the jivas are conscious entities, chinmaya vastu, and among all the jivas, the bhaktas of Krishna are endowed with pure consciousness, shuddha chinmaya. Krishna and the bhaktas are both shuddha chinmaya vastu, pure conscious entities, and in order to understand them, it is essential to have sambandha gyan, which is knowledge of the interrelationship between the material world, the jivas, and Krishna. If one is to worship the deity with Sambandha Gyan, then one must worship Krishna and serve the Bhaktas at the same time. This type of adoration and respect for the transcendental reality, Chinmaya Tattva, which is endowed with faith, Shraddha, is known as faith based on Shastra. Worship of the deity that lacks this unequivocal knowledge of the interrelationship between the different aspects of the transcendental reality is simply founded on customary or traditional regard. Such customary worship of the deity is not Shuddha Bhakti, although it is the first step in approaching the entrance to Bhakti. This is the conclusion of Shastra. Those who have reached this threshold of Bhakti have been described as follows. Grihita Vishnu Diksha Ko Vishnu Puja Paronara Vaishnavo Bihito Bigye Itaro smad a Vaishnavaha. Hari Bhakti Vilas, 155. Learned scholars have determined that a Vaishnava is one who is initiated into a Vishnu mantra in accordance with the regulations of Shastra and who is engaged in the worship of Sri Vishnu. All others are known as non Vaishnavas. Kanishta Vaishnavas, or Prakrita Bhaktas, are those who accept a family priest out of hereditary tradition, or who are prompted by worldly faith to imitate others by taking initiation into a Vishnu mantra and worshipping the deity of Sri Vishnu. Such materialistic devotees are not Shuddha Bhaktas. Rather, a shadow-like semblance of Bhakti called Chaya Bhakti Abhas is prominent in them. However, they do not have Pratibhimba Bhakti Abhas, which is a reflective semblance of Bhakti. This Pratibhimba Bhakti Abhas is offensive in nature and is devoid of Vaishnavism. The stage of Chaya Bhakti Abhas is the result of great fortune because it is the preliminary stage of Bhakti and people can gradually develop from it into Madhyam and Uttam Vaishnavas. Still, those at the stage of Chaya Bhakti Abhas cannot be called Shuddha Bhaktas. Such people worship the deity with worldly faith they can only behave toward others according to the ten types of religious duties that I have already described for people in general. The behavior, 
that the Shastras prescribe for Bhaktas does not apply to them, for they cannot even ascertain who is a true Bhakta and who is not. That power to discriminate is a symptom of the Madhyam Vaishnava. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.46 describes the behavior of the Madhyam Vaishnava as follows. Ishvare tad adine shu, bali sheshu dvishat sucha, prema maitre kripo peksha, ya karoti samadhyamaha. A Madhyam Bhagavat is one who loves Ishvara, is friendly towards his bhaktas, shows mercy towards those who are ignorant of bhakti, and neglects those who are inimical to Ishvara or his bhaktas. I am not referring here to Naimitika Dharma temporary religious or worldly duties. The behavior that I am describing is part of Nitya Dharma and it is essential in the life of a Vaishnava. Other types of behavior that are not opposed to this behavior may be accepted where necessary. A Vaishnava's behavior is directed toward four categories of individuals Sri Hari, his Bhaktas, materialistic people who are ignorant of spiritual truth, and those who are opposed to bhakti. A Vaishnava shows love, friendship, mercy and neglect, respectively, to these four kinds of individuals. In other words, he behaves lovingly towards Sri Hari, with friendship toward the bhaktas and mercifully towards the ignorant. He neglects those who are inimical. The first characteristic of a Madhyam Vaishnava is that he has prem for Sri Krishna, who is the Supreme Lord of all. The word prem here refers to Shuddha Bhakti, whose symptoms have been described as follows in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1 1 11. Anya bilashita shunyam, jnana kama dhyanavritam, anukulyena krishna nushilanam bhakti utama. Utam Bhakti is the consummate endeavor to serve Sri Krishna in a favorable mood. It is free from any other desire and it is not covered by knowledge of impersonal Brahman, by the daily or periodic duties outlined in the Shmiti Shastras, or by renunciation, yoga, sankhya, and other types of dharma. Bhakti that is imbued with such characteristics is first found in the sadhana practices of a Madhyam Vaishnava, and it extends up to the stages of Bhav and Prem. The only characteristic in the Bhakti of the Kanishta is that of service to the deity with faith. Such a person does not have the characteristics of Uttama Bhakti, namely, Anyabilasita Sunya, freedom from ulterior desires, Jnana Karmadi Anavrita, freedom from the coverings of impersonal knowledge and fruitive action, and Anukulyena Krishnanushilana, consummate endeavors to serve Krishna in a favorable mood. A Kanishta is considered to have become a Madhyam Vaishnava and a genuine devotee when Bhakti with these symptoms manifests in his heart. Prior to this stage, he is a Prakrita Bhakta, which means that he is only a semblance of a Bhakta, Bhakta Abbas, or a semblance of a Vaishnava, Vaishnava Abbas. The word Krishnanu Shilana refers to Prem, love for Krishna and it is qualified by the word anakulyena. This refers to those things that are favorable to Krishna Prem, namely, friendship with the bhaktas, mercy towards the ignorant, and neglect of those who are inimical. These three items are also symptoms of a Madhyam Vaishnava. The second characteristic of a Madhyam Vaishnava is his friendship toward bhaktas in whose hearts Shuddha Bhakti has appeared and who are submissive to Sri Hari's will. Kanishta Bhaktas are not Shuddha Bhaktas fully submissive to Sri Hari, and they do not offer respect or hospitality to Shuddha Bhaktas. Therefore, Madhyam and Uttam Bhaktas are the only suitable people with whom to develop intimate friendships. In three successive years, the Bhaktas of Kulinagram asked Sriman Mahaprabhu, What is a Vaishnava? and what are the symptoms by which he can be recognized? Sri Mahaprabhu replied by instructing them about Uttam, Madhyam and Kanishta Vaishnavas. Now, according to the characteristics of his description, all three of those classes, as he described them, meet the standards that I have defined for Madhyam and Uttam Vaishnavas. 
none of them correspond to the Kanishta Bhaktas, who are only capable of worshipping the deity form, because they do not utter Shuddha Krishna Nam. Their chanting is known as Chaya Nama Bas. Chaya Nama Bas refers to a semblance of the pure name, obscured by ignorance and anatas, like the sun covered by clouds, which does not manifest its full brilliance. Mahaprabhu instructed Madhyam Adhikari Grihasta Vaishnavas to serve the three kinds of Vaishnavas, which he describes as follows. One from whose mouth Krishna Nam is heard even once, one from whose mouth Krishna Nam is heard constantly, and one whose very sight spontaneously evokes the chanting of Sri Krishna Nam. All these three types of Vaishnavas are worthy of service. But this is not true of one who only utters Nama Bas and not Shuddha Krishna Nam. Only Vaishnavas who utter Shuddha Nam are worthy of service. We are instructed to serve the Vaishnavas in accordance with their respective levels of advancement. The word Maitri signifies association, conversation and service. As soon as one sees a pure Vaishnava, one should welcome him and offer him respect, offer him a seat and converse with him and fulfill his needs as far as one is able. One should serve him in all these ways and one should never criticize him or show him disrespect, even if his appearance is unattractive or if he has some disease. The third characteristic of the Madhyam Vaishnav is that he bestows mercy on the ignorant. The word Balisha refers to people who are ignorant of spiritual truth, bewildered or foolish. It means materialistic people who have not received any genuine guidance in spiritual matters, but have not been contaminated by unauthorized doctrines such as Mayavad. They are not envious of bhaktas and bhakti, but their mundane egoism and attachment prevents them from developing faith in Sri Hari. Learned scholars also belong in this category if they have not attained the highest fruit of study, which is to develop faith in Sri Hari. The Kanishta Adhikari, or Prakrita Bhakta, is standing at the doorway to the temple of Bhakti, but because of ignorance in the principles of Sambandha Gyan, he has not yet attained Shuddha Bhakti. Such a person is also regarded as Balisha until he comes to the platform of Shuddha Bhakti. When he becomes acquainted with the truth of Sambandha Gyan and awakens taste, for Shuddha Harinam by the mercy of pure bhaktas, his ignorance will be dissipated and he will attain the status of a Madhyam Vaishnava. It is essential that a Madhyam Vaishnava should bestow his mercy upon all the above-mentioned ignorant people. He should treat them as guests and should satisfy their needs as far as he is able. But that is not enough in itself. He should also act in such a way as to awaken their faith in Ananya Bhakti and their taste for Shuddha Nam. This is the real meaning of mercy. The ignorant may be victimized by bad association and may fall down at any time because they lack expertise in the Shastras. The Madhyam Vaishnava should always protect such susceptible people from bad association. He should mercifully give them his association and gradually instruct them in spiritual matters and in the glories of Shuddha Nam. A mentally unbalanced person must be under the care of a physician because he cannot cure himself. Just as one should pardon the anger of a diseased person, so one should excuse the improper behavior of the ignorant. This attitude is known as mercy. The ignorant have many misconceptions, such as faith in karma kanda, occasional inclination towards gyan, worshipping the deity with ulterior motives, faith in yoga, indifference towards the association of pure Vaishnavas, attachment to Varnashram and many other things. However, the Kanishta Adhikari can quickly become a Madhyam Adhikari Shuddha Bhakta when these misconceptions are dispelled by good association, mercy and good instructions. When such people begin to worship the deity of Bhagavan, it may be understood that they have laid the foundation of all auspiciousness, of this there is no doubt. They do not have the defect of adhering to false doctrines, and for this reason they have a scent of true Shraddha. Their deity worship is not like that of the Mayavadis, who do not even have a trace of Shraddha for the deity, and who are offenders at the lotus feet of Hari.
That is why the words Shraddhaya Ihate, he worships with faith, have been used in the shloka 11.2.47 that describes the Kanishta Bhakta. Mayavad philosophy teaches that Bhagavan has no form and that the deity is simply an imaginary icon. Mayavadis arrange for neophytes to worship the deity, but how can they have any faith in the deity? There is a significant difference between their deity worship and that of even the most neophyte Vaishnavas. Kanishta Adhikari Vaishnavas worship the deity with faith, knowing that Bhagavan possesses personal form and attributes. Mayavadis, however, believe that Bhagavan has no form or attributes, and that the deity is therefore imaginary and temporary. Neophytes are not guilty of the offense of Mayavad, and that is why they are accepted as Prakrita Vaishnavas, materialistic devotees, even though they do not possess any other Vaishnava characteristics. This is where their Vaishnavism is found, on the strength of this one quality, and by the mercy of sadhus, they will certainly gradually be elevated. Madhyam Adhikari Vaishnavas must be genuinely merciful towards such people, and if they are, the neophyte Bhakta's worship of the deity and his chanting of Harinam will quickly rise from the Abbas stage to the purely transcendental stage. The Madhyam Vaishnava's fourth characteristic is neglect towards those who are inimical. Here we must define enmity and describe its different types. Enmity, Dvesh, is a particular attitude which is also known as Matsarata, envy, and which is exactly the opposite of love. Bhagavan is the only object of love, and Dvesh is the attitude that is directly opposite to love for him. There are five different types of Dvesh. Absence of faith in Ishwara, the belief that Ishwara is nothing more than a natural potency that brings about the results of all actions, the belief that Ishwara has no particular form, the belief that the Jivas are not eternally subordinate to Ishwara, and the absence of mercy. Individuals whose hearts are contaminated by these inimical attitudes are absolutely bereft of Shuddha Bhakti. They do not even have Prakrita Bhakti, the rudimentary devotion that is the doorway to Shuddha Bhakti, and which is represented by the neophyte Bhakta's worship of the deity. The five types of enmity are found to coexist with attachment to material sense enjoyment. Sometimes the third and fourth types of enmity lead to such an extreme form of asceticism or aversion towards the world that it culminates in self-annihilation. This is seen in the lives of the Mayavad sannyasis. How should Sudabhaktas behave towards such inimical people? It is their duty to avoid them. The word upeksha, neglect, does not imply that one should abandon all social dealings that are normal between human beings, nor does it mean that one should fail to alleviate an inimical person's difficulty or deprivation if he falls into distress. Grihastha Vaishnavas remain within society, so they have many types of relationships. For instance, with relatives through marriage, with others through business dealings, through the maintenance of property and bringing up of animals, through endeavouring to mitigate the sufferings and ailments of others, and through their position as citizens of the state. These different social relations entail connection with inimical people, and avoidance does not mean that one should at once give them up. One is obliged to conduct routine affairs and interact with people who are indifferent to Ishvara, but one should not take their association when it comes to spiritual matters. Some members of one's own family may acquire a malicious nature as a result of their sinful activities from a previous life. Should one abandon such people? Certainly not. One should deal with them without attachment, insofar as ordinary affairs are concerned, but one should not associate with them for spiritual matters. Neglect should be applied in this regard. Spiritual association means to meet together for the purpose of spiritual advancement, to discuss topics of eternal truth, and to render reciprocal service and welfare that awakens one's devotional sentiments. Neglect means avoiding the association of people with whom such types of exchange are not possible. When an inimical person who has adopted discordant or inconsistent opinions hears glorification of Shuddha Bhakti 
or virtuous instructions regarding bhakti, he will immediately retort with some futile argument, which is not beneficial for you or for him. One should avoid such fruitless arguments and interact with such people only as far as necessary in routine social dealings. One may think that one should include inimical people among the ignorant and therefore bestow mercy upon them, but if one does so, one will not help them and will only harm oneself. One should be benevolent but with caution. Madhyam Adhikari Shuddha Bhaktas should certainly follow these four instructions. If they neglect to do so in any way, they become guilty of behaving improperly and thus fail to do that for which they are qualified. This is considered a serious defect as explained in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.21.2. Sve sve dikare ya nishta sa guna parikirtitaha viparyaya studosha syad ubayo esha nishchayaha To be firmly established in the duties one is authorized to perform is a good quality, whereas failure to do so is a fault. Good qualities and faults are ascertained in this way. In other words, good qualities and faults are determined according to one's eligibility and not by any other criterion. According to the Shastras, the Madhyam Adhikari Shuddha Bhakta should develop prem for Krishna and friendship with his pure bhaktas. He should be merciful to the ignorant and should neglect those who are inimical. The degree of friendship that the Madhyam Bhakta establishes with other bhaktas should be in keeping with the degree of their advancement in bhakti. The degree of mercy that he bestows upon the ignorant depends on their degree of sincerity or foolishness, and the extent to which he neglects the inimical depends on the degree of their enmity. The Madhyam Bhakta considers all these things as he interacts with others in spiritual affairs. Worldly affairs should be conducted in a straightforward manner, but should always be performed with a consideration of the ultimate spiritual benefit. Just then, a resident of Baragachi named Nityananda Das interrupted by saying, What is the behavior of Uttam Bhaktas? Slightly startled, Babaji Mahashai said, Brother, you have asked a question that I am just in the process of answering. Let me finish what I have to say. I am an old man and my memory is fading. If the subject matter changes too abruptly, I will forget what I was going to say. Babaji was strict. Although he never found fault with anyone, he was quick to respond when anyone spoke inappropriately. Everyone was stunned to hear his words. Again he offered pranam to Nityananda Prabhu at the foot of the banyan tree and resumed speaking. Babaji, when the bhakti of the Madhyam Vaishnava progresses beyond the stages of sadhan and bhav and comes to the level of prem, it becomes highly condensed and at that time the Vaishnava becomes an Uttama Bhakta. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.45 describes the symptoms of an Uttama Vaishnava as follows. Sarava Bhute Shuya Pasyed Bhagavad Bhavam Atmanaha Bhutani Bhagavat Yatmani Esha Bhagavatotamaha One who sees his own Bhagavat Bhavam, the ecstatic mood of attraction towards Sri Bhagavan, in the hearts of all jivas, Sarva Bhuteshu, and sees all beings within Sri Bhagavan is an Uttama Bhagavat. An Uttama Vaishnava perceives that all living beings love Sri Hari with the same particular feeling of transcendental love that he himself cherishes towards his Ishtadev. He also perceives that Sri Hari feels a reciprocal attitude of love towards all living beings. An Uttama Vaishnava has no disposition other than this mood of transcendental love. Other moods arise from time to time according to different circumstances, but they are all transformations of that prem. For example, Shukadeva Goswami was an Uttama Bhagavat, but he described Kangsa in words such as Bhoja Pangsula, a disgrace to the Bhoja dynasty. Although it appears as if these words were spoken out of enmity towards Kangsa, they are actually a manifestation of prem towards Krishna. When Shuddha Prem becomes the very life of a bhakta, he is known as an Uttama Bhagavat. In this condition, there is no longer any distinction between love, friendship, mercy and neglect. 
as is the case with the Madhyam Adhikari. All his behavior becomes a manifestation of Prem, and there is no difference in his eyes between a Kanishtya, Madhyam, and Uttama Vaishnava, nor is there any difference between a Vaishnava and a non-Vaishnava. This advanced condition is extremely rare. Just consider now that a Kanishta Vaishnava does not render service to Vaishnavas, and an Uttama Vaishnava does not make any distinction between Vaishnavas and non-Vaishnavas, for he sees all jivas as servants of Krishna. This means that only Madhyam Vaishnavas offer respect to Vaishnavas and render service to them. A Madhyam Vaishnava must serve the three kinds of Vaishnavas, those who chant Krishna Nam even once, those who chant Krishna Nam constantly, and those whose mere sight automatically causes Krishna Nam to dance on one's tongue. A Vaishnava may be considered a Vaishnava, a superior Vaishnava, or a superlative Vaishnava, according to his degree of advancement. A Madhyam Bhakta should serve Vaishnavas according to their status. Only an Uttam Vaishnava will conclude that it is improper to consider whether a Vaishnava is a Kanishta, Madhyam or Uttam. If a Madhyam Adhikari Vaishnava thinks in this way, he will become an offender. Sriman Mahaprabhu indicated this to the residents of Kulinagram, and his instructions are to be revered even more than the Vedas by all Madhyam Vaishnavas. And what are the Vedas or Shruti? They are the orders of Bhagavan. Having said this much, Haridas Babaji became silent for a moment. At this time, Nityananda Das Babaji folded his hands and said very gently, May I ask a question now? Haridas Babaji replied, As it pleases you. Babaji Mahashai, to which category of Vaishnavas do you think I belong? Am I a Kanishta or a Madhyam Vaishnava? I am certainly not an Uttama Vaishnava. Haridas Babaji Mahashai smiled a little and said, Brother, can one who has received the name Nityananda Das be anything other than an Uttam Vaishnava? My Nitai is very merciful. Even when he is beaten, he gives Prem in return. So if one takes his name and becomes his Das, need anything more be said? Nityananda Das I sincerely want to know my actual position. Babaji Then tell me your whole story. If Nitai empowers me to speak, I shall say something. Nityananda Das I took birth in a low-class family in a village on the bank of the Padmavati River. I was very simple and humble by nature from childhood. I was married at an early age, but I never felt prone to indecency. After some days, my parents died, and my wife and I remained alone in the home. We did not have so much wealth, so we worked every day to maintain ourselves. But after a while, she also left her body. Because of my separation from her, thoughts of detachment awakened in my mind. Near my village were many Vaishnavas who had renounced household life, and I saw that the people of Baragachi offered them great respect. I hankered for that respect very strongly, and because of the temporary feelings of detachment brought on by the death of my wife, I went to Baragachi and accepted the dress of a Vaishnava mendicant. However, after a few days, my mind became fickle, it was possessed by wicked thoughts, and it became very difficult for me to control. But by great fortune, I received the association of an excellent Vaishnava who is pure and simple. At present, he is performing bhajan in Braj. With deep affection, he gave me profound advice, kept me in his association, and purified my mind. Now my mind is no longer disturbed by mischievous thoughts. I have developed taste for chanting a hundred thousand names of Harinam every day. I understand that there is no difference between Shri Hari and Shri Nam, and that both are fully spiritual. I observe the Akadashi fast according to Shastra, and offer water to Tulsi. When the Vaishnavas perform Kirtan, I also join with rapt attention. I drink the water that washes the feet of pure Vaishnavas. I study the Bhakti Shastras every day. I no longer desire to eat palatable food or dress nicely. I have no taste to hear or participate in mundane talks. When I see the Vaishnavas' ecstatic moods, 
a desire comes into my mind to roll on the ground at their feet, and I sometimes do so, but it is out of a desire for prestige. Now, please give your verdict. To which class of Vaishnava do I belong, and how should I behave? Haridas Babaji looked at Vaishnavdas Babaji with a smile and said, Tell us to which class of Vaishnav Nityananda Das belongs. Vaishnav Das From what I have heard, he has surpassed the Kanishta stage and has entered the Madhyam stage. Babaji, that is my feeling also. Nityananda Das How wonderful! Today I have come to know of my true position from the mouths of the Vaishnavas. Please bestow your mercy upon me so that I might gradually come to the stage of an Uttam Vaishnava. Vaishnavdas At the time that you accepted mendicancy, there was a desire for honor and prestige in your heart, so you were not actually qualified to enter the renounced order. In spite of this, you have attained genuine auspiciousness by the mercy of the Vaishnavas. Nityananda Das Even now I have some desire for honor. I think that I may attract others and win tremendous respect if I am seen weeping profusely and displaying ecstatic emotions. Babaji, you must endeavor to give this up, otherwise there is a serious danger that your bhakti will be eroded and you will have to descend to the Kanishta platform again. This desire for fame is the most pernicious enemy of the Vaishnavas and it does not easily agree to leave the sadhaks. Moreover, a single drop of genuine spiritual emotion is far superior to an imitative display of emotion. Chaya Bhava Bas Please give me your mercy, said Nityananda Das, and reverentially place the dust from Haridas Babaji's lotus feet on his own head. At this, Babaji became unsettled. He quickly got up, embraced Nityananda Das, seated him by his side, and patted him on the back. How extraordinary is the effect of touching a Vaishnava! Tears immediately began to stream from Nityananda Das's eyes, and Haridas Babaji could not check his own tears, although he tried to do so. A wonderful atmosphere was manifest, and tears came to the eyes of all the assembled Vaishnavas. At that moment, Nityananda Das accepted Sri Haridas in his heart as his guru, and his life became successful. Within a short time, the emotion subsided, and he inquired, What are the primary and secondary characteristics of a Kanishta Bhakta in regard to Bhakti? Babaji, the two primary characteristics of a Kanishta Vaishnav are his faith in the eternal form of Bhagavan and his worship of the deity. His secondary characteristics are the devotional activities that he performs, such as hearing, chanting, remembering and offering prayers. Nityananda Das, one cannot be a Vaishnava unless he has faith in the eternal form of Bhagavan and worships the deity according to the regulations of Shastra. So I can well understand why these two are primary symptoms. However, I cannot understand why hearing, chanting, remembering and other such activities are secondary. Babaji, the Kanista Vaishnava is not acquainted with the intrinsic nature of Shuddha Bhakti of which hearing, chanting and so on are angas, limbs. Consequently, his hearing and chanting do not assume their primary identity, but are manifest in a gona, secondary form. Furthermore, whatever arises from the three gunas, sattva, goodness, raja, passion and tama, ignorance, is known as gona. When these activities become nirgun, free from the influence of the material modes, they are angas of Shuddha Bhakti, and one has attained the Madhyam stage. Nityananda Das How can the Kanishta Vaishnava be called a Bhakta when he is contaminated with the faults of karma and jnana, and his heart is filled with desires for things other than Bhakti? Babaji One becomes eligible for Bhakti once he has attained Shraddha, which is the root of Bhakti. There is no doubt then that he is situated at the doorway of bhakti. The word Shraddha means Vishvasa, belief. When the Kanishta Bhakta awakens belief in the Divine Deity, he becomes eligible for bhakti. 
Nityananda Das. When will he obtain bhakti? Babaji. The Kanishta Bhakta becomes a Shuddha Bhakta at the Madhyam level when his contamination of karma and jnana is dissipated, and he desires nothing other than Ananya Bhakti, exclusive Bhakti. At that point, he understands that there is a difference between service to guests and service to bhaktas, and thus he awakens taste for serving the bhaktas, which is favorable to bhakti. Nityananda Das Shuddha Bhakti appears along with Sambandha Gyan. When is that knowledge awakened by which one becomes eligible for Shuddha Bhakti? Babaji True Sambandha Gyan and Shuddha Bhakti are manifest simultaneously when knowledge contaminated by Mayavad conceptions has been dispelled. Nityananda Das How long does that take? Babaji The stronger a person's Sukriti from past activities, the sooner he will attain it. Nityananda Das What is the first result attained by past Sukriti? Babaji One attains Sadhu Sangha. Nityananda Das and what is the progression that evolves from Sadhu Sangha? Babaji Srimad Bhagavatam 3.25.25 describes the systematic evolution of bhakti very succinctly. Satam prasangan mama virya sam vido bhavanti hritkarna rasayana kata taj josnanad asvapavarga vartmani shraddha ratir bhaktir anukramishyati as a result of full-hearted association with Shuddha Bhaktas, one gets the opportunity to hear descriptions of my heroic deeds, which are like a nectarian tonic for the ears and the heart. By repeatedly relishing those topics through hearing and contemplation, one quickly and successively attains Shraddha, Rati and Prem Bhakti towards me and becomes free from all anartas. Nityananda Das How does one attain Sadhu Sangha? Babaji, I have already said that Sadhu Sangha is attained by Sukriti acquired in previous births. This is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam 10.51.53. Bhava Pavago Brahmato Yada Bhavej Janasya Tarya Chuta Sat Samagrama Sat Sangha Moyarhi Tadaiva Sat Gato Paravareshe Tvaijayate Rati O Achuta the jiva has been wandering in the cycle of birth and death since time without beginning. When the time for his release from this cycle approaches, he obtains satsanga. From that moment, he becomes firmly attached to you, who are the controller of both spirit and matter, and the supreme goal of attainment for the sadhus. Nityananda Das It is only by sadhu sangha that a kanishta bhakta awakens an inclination for worshipping the deity. So how can it be said that he doesn't render any service to sadhus? Babaji When, by good fortune, one obtains sadhu sangha, belief, vishvasha, in the divinity of the deity awakens. Nonetheless, worship of the deity must be accompanied by service to the sadhus themselves. Until this type of faith develops, one shraddha is incomplete and one remains ineligible for ananya bhakti. Nityananda Das. What are the stages of progress for a Kanishta Bhakta? Babaji. Suppose that a Kanishta Bhakta worships the deity form of Bhagavan every day with faith, but is not yet free from the contaminations of karma, jnana, and extraneous desires. By chance, some guests come to him who happen to be Bhaktas, and he welcomes and serves them, just as he would any other guests. The Kanishta Bhakta observes the activities and behavior of the bhaktas and gets a chance to hear their discussion on spiritual topics based on the Shastra. In this way, he begins to develop great respect for the character of the bhaktas. At this point, he becomes aware of his own defects. He begins to follow the behavior of the sadhus and to rectify his own behavior. Gradually, his defects of karma and jnana begin to fade. And as his heart becomes purified, he becomes increasingly free from extraneous desires. He studies the Shastra by regularly hearing narrations of Sri Hari's pastimes and the fundamental 
ontological truths about Sri Hari. His Sambandha Gyan becomes progressively firmer as he accepts the transcendental nature of Sri Hari, Sri Nam, and the Angas of Bhakti, such as hearing and chanting. When his Sambandha Gyan becomes complete, he attains the stage of a Madhyam Vaishnava. It is at this point that he truly begins to associate with Bhaktas. He can then perceive that Bhaktas are vastly superior to ordinary guests, and he can begin to regard them on the level of Guru. Nityananda Das Why is it that many Kanishta Bhaktas do not progress? Babaji If the Kanishta Bhakta associates mainly with people who are inimical, his immature level of eligibility for Bhakti quickly fades, and his eligibility for Karma and Gyan becomes prominent. In some cases, the Bhakta does not become more or less eligible, but remains on exactly the same level. Nityananda Das when does that happen? Babaji. When he associates equally with bhaktas and inimical people. Nityananda Das. Under what circumstances can his advancement be assured? Babaji. His advancement is rapid when his association with bhaktas becomes prominent. Nityananda Das. What is the nature of the Kanishta Adhikari's inclination towards sinful and pious activities? Babaji. In the preliminary stage, his inclination for sinful and pious activities will be like that of the karmis and jnanis, but as he progresses in bhakti, these propensities will be dispelled and his inclination to please Shihari will become prominent. Nityananda Das Dear Master, I have understood the situation of Kanista Adhikaris. Now, kindly describe the primary symptoms of the Madhyam Adhikari Bhaktas. Babaji. The Madhyam Bhakta has Ananya Bhakti towards Krishna. His friendship with the Bhaktas consists of four attitudes. He considers Bhaktas to be more dear than his very self, Atma Buddhi. He feels intimate affection towards them, Mamata Buddhi. He considers Bhaktas as worshipable, Ija Buddhi. And he considers them to be a place of pilgrimage, Tirtha Buddhi. The Madhyam Bhakta also bestows mercy on those who are ignorant of spiritual truth, and he neglects the inimical. These are the primary characteristics of the Madhyam Bhakta. When one develops Sambandha Gyan and practices Bhakti Sadhan, which is the means, Abhideya, one attains the goal of Prem, Prayojan. This is the methodology of the Madhyam Bhakta. It is generally observed that when Madhyam Bhaktas perform Harinam Kirtan and other such activities in the association of Bhaktas, they do so without committing any offence. Nityananda Das What are the secondary symptoms of the Madhyam Bhakta? Babaji The secondary symptom of the Madhyam Bhakta is the way in which he lives his life. His life is completely surrendered to the will of Krishna and is favourable to Bhakti. Nityananda Das can he still commit sins or offences? Babaji Some tendency to commit sins or offences may remain in the beginning stage, but gradually these will disappear. Whatever sins or offences are still present at the beginning of the Madhyam stage are like chickpeas that are just about to be ground to a pulp. They are still seen as small lumps, but within a few moments they will be crushed and will cease to exist. Yukta Vairagya Appropriate renunciation is the life and soul of the Madhyam Bhakta. Nityananda Das Does the Madhyam Bhakta have any trace of karma, jnana or extraneous desires? Babaji In the initial stages, a faint trace of these things may remain, but finally they are uprooted. Whatever vestiges of karma and jnana remain at the beginning of the Madhyam stage manifests occasionally but they gradually fade into oblivion. Nityananda Das Do such bhaktas even desire to live? And if so, why? Babaji Actually, they have no desire to live or die, or to attain liberation. They desire to live only to attain consummation of their bhajan. Nityananda Das But why don't they long for death? What happiness can come 
from remaining in this gross material body. When they die, will they not obtain their spiritual forms and identities by Krishna's mercy? Babaji, they have no independent desires. All their desires are solely dependent on Krishna's will because they are firmly convinced that everything is happening by His will and that whatever happens is only because of His desire. They have therefore no need to aspire for anything independently. Nityananda Das, I have understood the symptoms of the Madhyam Adhikari. Now please tell me about the secondary symptoms of the Uttam Adhikari. Babaji, their secondary symptoms are their bodily activities, but even these cannot actually be viewed separately as secondary symptoms, because they are so much under the control of Prem, which is beyond all influence of the material modes. Nityananda Das, Prabhu, there is no provision in Shastra for the Kanista Adhikaris to renounce household life, and Madhyam Adhikaris may live either as householders or renunciants. Is it possible that some Uttam Adhikaris may live as householders? Babaji, one's level of eligibility cannot be determined by whether one is a householder or a renunciant. The only criterion is one's advancement in bhakti. There is certainly no harm if an Uttam Adhikari Bhakta remains a householder. All the Grihasta Bhaktas of Braj were Uttam Adhikaris. Many Grihasta Bhaktas of our Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were Uttam Adhikaris. Rai Ramananda is the foremost example of this. Nityananda Das Prabhu, if an Uttam Adhikari Bhakta is a Grihasta, and a Madhyam Adhikari Bhakta is in the renounced order, how should they behave towards each other? Babaji, the person who is less qualified should offer Dandavat Pranam to the person who is more qualified. This stipulation is only for the benefit of the Madhyam Adhikari, because the Uttam Adhikari Bhakta does not expect respect from anyone. In all living beings he sees the presence of Bhagavan. Nityananda Das should one bring many Vaishnavas together and hold festivals for distributing Bhagavat Prasad? Babaji, from the spiritual point of view, there is no objection if many Vaishnavas gather together for some particular occasion and a Madhyam Adhikari Grihasta Bhakta wants to honor them by distributing the Bhagavat Prasad. However, it is not good to make a pompous display of serving the Vaishnavas, for then this activity will become adulterated with the mode of passion. One should distribute prasad to the assembled Vaishnavas with great care and respect. This is one's duty. If one wishes to serve the Vaishnavas in this way, one should only invite pure Vaishnavas. Nityananda Das A new caste has emerged in Bharagachi consisting of people who refer to themselves as descendants of Vaishnavas. Kanishta Adhikari householders invite them and feed them in the name of Vaishnav Seva. How is this to be viewed? Babaji, have these descendants of Vaishnavas taken up Shuddha Bhakti? Nityananda Das, I don't see Shuddha Bhakti in any of them. They only call themselves Vaishnavas. Some of them wear kopins, loincloths. Babaji, why is this type of practice in vogue? It is not proper. I can only surmise that it is going on because Kanishta Vaishnavas cannot recognize who is a true Vaishnava. Nityananda Das, do the descendants of Vaishnavas deserve any special regard? Babaji, honor is due for those who are actually Vaishnavas. If the descendants of Vaishnavas are pure Vaishnavas, they should be honored in proportion to their advancement in bhakti. Nityananda Das, what if the descendant of a Vaishnava is only a worldly man? Babaji, then he should be considered as a worldly man and not as a Vaishnava. He should not be honored as a Vaishnava. One should always remember the instruction given by Sriman Mahaprabhu, Shikshastika 3. Trinada pi sunichena, taror api sahishnuna, amanina manadena, kirtaniya sadahari. One should chant Sri Harinam in a humble state of mind, thinking himself more insignificant than the straw in the street and more tolerant than the tree. 
one should be devoid of all sense of false prestige and should be ready to offer respects to others. In such a state of mind, one can chant Sri Harinam constantly. One should be free from pride and should offer appropriate respect to others. One should offer Vaishnavas the respect due to a Vaishnava, and he should offer those who are not Vaishnavas the respect that befits any human being. If one does not offer respect to others, he does not acquire the necessary qualification to chant Sri Nam. Nityananda Das How can one be free from pride? Babaji One should not proudly think, I am a Brahmana, I am wealthy, I am a learned scholar, I am a Vaishnava, or I have renounced family life. People may well offer respect because one has such qualities, but one should not want to be honoured by others out of such egoistic pride. One should always think oneself to be worthless, insignificant, destitute, and lower than a blade of grass. Nityananda Das It seems from this that one cannot be a Vaishnava without humility and compassion. Babaji, that is quite true. Nityananda Das Then does Bhakti Devi depend on humility and compassion? Babaji No, Bhakti is completely independent. Bhakti is the personification of beauty, and she is the supreme ornament. She does not depend on any other good quality. Humility and compassion are not separate qualities, but are included within Bhakti. I am a servant of Krishna. I am destitute. I have nothing. Krishna is my all in all. The Bhakti that is expressed in these attitudes is itself humility. Dainya. The tenderness of heart experienced towards Krishna is known as bhakti. All other jivas are servants of Krishna, and tenderness of heart towards them is compassion, daya. Therefore, compassion is included within bhakti. Shama, forgiveness, is the bhav situated between humility and compassion. When I am so wretched and insignificant myself, how can I inflict punishment upon others? When this attitude is combined with compassion, forgiveness automatically appears. Forgiveness is also included in bhakti. Krishna is real, satya. The fact that the jivas are servants of Krishna is also real, as is the fact that the material world is only a boarding house for the jivas. That means that bhakti is also real, because these truths are based on the jivas' relationship with Krishna which is itself bhakti. Truth, humility, compassion and forgiveness are four special qualities that are included in bhakti. Nityananda Das How should a Vaishnava behave towards the followers of other religions? Babaji The instruction of Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.26 is Narayana Kala Shanta Bhajanti Hyana Suyava those who are free from the propensity to slander others and who are fully peaceful worship Sri Narayan and his plenary portions. There is no dharma other than Vaishnav dharma. All other dharmas that are ever or ever will be propagated in the world are either steps on the staircase of Vaishnava dharma or else distortions of it. These dharmas that are steps leading to bhakti should be respected in proportion to their degree of purity. One should not bear any malice toward dharmas that are distortions of bhakti, but one should focus exclusively on the cultivation of one's own devotional truths. One should not maintain any animosity towards the followers of other religions. When the time is ripe, the followers of various other dharmas will become Vaishnavas easily. Of this there is no doubt. Nityananda Das is it our duty to preach Vaishnava Dharma or not? Babaji, certainly it is. Our Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given everyone the responsibility of spreading this Dharma. Nacha Gao Bhakta Sange Kara Sankirtan Krishna Nama Upadeshi Tara Sarvajan Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 7.92 Dance, sing and perform Sankirtan in the association of Bhaktas. You should deliver everyone by instructing them to chant Sri Krishna Nam. 
Hata eva ami agya dilun sabakare. Jahan tahan prema pala deha yare tare. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 9.36 Therefore, I am ordering everyone to distribute the fruits of Prem wherever they go and to whomever they meet. However, one must remember not to give Sri Krishna Nam to unqualified people. Such people should first be given the necessary qualification. Only then can they be given Hari Nam. Furthermore, these statements of Sriman Mahaprabhu do not apply when neglect, upeksha, is appropriate, for instance when dealing with inimical people. Trying to enlighten such people only presents obstacles to one's preaching. When Nityananda Das had heard Haridas Babaji Mahashai's ambrosial words, he rolled on the ground at his feet in great love. The grove reverberated with the Vaishnava's loud exclamations of Sri Harinam, and everyone offered Dandavat Pranam to Babaji Mahashai. The day's meeting in that secluded grove came to an end, and everyone returned to their respective places. Thus ends the eighth chapter of Jaiva Dharma, entitled Nitya Dharma and Vaishnava Behavior.